Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 we are working on module 2, our very first lesson, lesson number 1. And in lesson number 1 today we are multiplying multi-digit whole numbers and multiples of 10 using place value patterns and the distributive and associative properties. So tonight's homework is a little on the difficult side um, in that we're not doing standard algorithm. We're working with both regular multiplication and with place values in a way that helps us to understand those problems. Um, if, if this seems a little tricky to people who are more interested in doing standard algorithms, stick with us. We'll get to some of those problems later on in this module, but we want to take a look at some of our, um, some of our first problems today. Let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one asks us the following. It asks us to fill in the blanks using your knowledge of place value units and basic facts. I'm going to do 1C. Um, I'm going to look at 830 times 20. And they sort of started me out here. They said, let's think of this as 83 tens. Let's first think about that. Is this 83 tens? Well, sure, we have a 3 in the tens place, and if we wanted to, we could think of this as 83 tens. Those 800s, we could think of them as 80 tens, plus the 3 tens we already have. So yeah, that's 83 tens. All right, and let's take a look at the number 20. Well, they ask us to think about that as 2 tens. Okay, so let's see. If we have 83 tens and 2 tens, that's the same as 166 what? So you can do that as a... As just regular math facts, but let me take a look at what they're saying. When they say it's 83 tens, they're saying that this is the same as 83 times 10, right? And we're multiplying that by 2 tens times 2 times 10. And then all they've done here in this next step, right, so that's restating this, right? This is sort of unit form, and this is standard form. This is 83 tens, and this is 2 tens. And so all they're doing when they combine this to create 86 is they're saying, well, let's take a little step. Let's, let's just move these around. Let's say 83 times 2, and then let's see. Oh, 10 times 10. All right, which property allows us to do that? Oh, that's the commutative property. It allows us to do the multiplication in any order. We're going to just do it in a more convenient order for ourselves, but as long as it's multiplication, we can do that in any order we please. And so it looks like they've done essentially this, which uses the associative property, right? 83 times 2, they've said, oh, that's 166. And now we have to figure out what this is. Let's see, well, 10 times 10, that's really easy. So, uh, so it's 100. So I think they intend us to write 166 hundreds because they're still doing it in unit form. But it would also be just as correct to say 166 times 100. We could do it that way too because we are now associating whichever chunks of the multiplication are most helpful to us. So we've combined our first two terms. First, we moved our terms around. We said, oh, it'd be, you know, it'd be helpful to have the numbers, the unusual numbers, all in one place. So we did that. And it would be helpful to have all the 10 parts in one place. So we did that, right? That's the commutative power. And then we are allowed to go ahead and draw our parentheses to do whichever calculations we want to do first. That's the associative property. And so once we get down to that, we said we have this is 166 hundreds, or 166 times 100. So we can figure out what that is. Let's see, 166 hundreds, oops, 166 hundreds means that that last six is in the hundreds place. So I guess there'd be a tenths place and a ones place. And that makes sense because when we do 100, 166 times 100, we know that we're going to start off with hundreds, tens, and ones, but we knew we we're going to move everything two place values to the left because of our two zeros. So that says we're going to have 16,600 as our answer. Awesome. Let's take a look at one more problem. Oh, maybe we'll do two more problems tonight. Problem number two. Let's do that. Problem number two asks us to do the following. It says, determine if these equations are true or false. Defend your answer using your knowledge of place value and the communicative, commutative, sorry, associative and or distributive properties. And I chose a particularly challenging problem, which is 2C. 50 tens times 4 hundreds equals 4 tens times 5 hundreds. Now, this is a weird one, huh? So let's see if we can tease out what all this is. Uh, let's see, 50 tens. So it looks like we go from tens to tens and hundreds to hundreds. And then the question is, are these numbers essentially the same? So, hmm, 50 tens. 50 tens is, let's see, that's the same as... 50 times 10, and 4 hundreds is the same as 4 times 100. All right, let's see. 
So then the question is, let's see, we kind of want to, it looks like we're kind of trying to move the fives over toward the end and move the fours closer to the beginning. So let's do that. Let's just say, let's say this is the same as, we're going to move them around using our commutative, pro commutative property. Let's say this is the same as 4 times 10 times 50 times 100. That we're getting closer to the form that they had, right? 40 tens and 500s. So here, I'm thinking we're going to focus in on this 50. This 50 is the same as 5 times 10, right? So I'm going to rewrite this again. So 4 times 10 times 10 times 5 times 100. All we did this time is that we took this 50 and we expressed it as 5 times 10. Because I'm thinking maybe we could make 40 over here on the left-hand side. Yeah. So this is the same as 40, which is what we're looking for. So let's see, 40 times 10 times 5 times 100. So let's see, uh, we're going for 40 tens, that's this, right? 40 tens, 40 tens times 500, it's 5 copies of 100. I think we've done it, right? First, we use the commutative property to move our, four, our 50 and our 4 around. And then we broke down our 50 into digits that were more familiar and more friendly to us, right? A 10 and a 5. And then essentially we did, we do the associative property to go ahead and figure out what 4 times 10 was because we knew we wanted to get a 40 in there at some point. And what we ended up with was a form that looked exactly like what we ended up with. So it turns out we can change bit by bit this number, this expression, 50 tens times 4 hundreds. We can gradually change it into this expression. 40 tens times 5 hundreds. Now, I realize fully that you could go ahead and just do the mathematics of this if you wanted to, but it helps us to understand what we can and cannot do with operations if we play around with them a little bit. And in this problem, we've played around with it a great deal, paying attention to our commutative property, to our associative property, and in the end, we ended up proving that one of these sides of the equation is exactly the same as the other side of the equation. Awesome. For our last problem this evening, we're just going to review how they handled 3a, okay? The, no, the directions for number 3 are pretty straightforward. Find the products, show your thinking. The first row gives some ideas for showing your thinking. Okay, so let's take a look at 3a. They say 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, a basic math fact. And they say, well, hey, what about 5 times 50? And I see what they've done here. They've said, basically, they kind of, it was a kind of a tweener step, right? They expressed this as basically 5 times 5 tens. And they said, okay, well, then let's just mu don't multiply the 5 and the 5 together to get tw 25. And then our tens are out here, right? They basically did an associative property, 5 times 5 times 10, and did that. Now, once you've got 25 times 10, we know that 25 is going to move out one place value to the left. And so the tens are going to become hundreds. The ones are going to become tens, and the zero, the, the tenths are going to become ones, and we have 250. Now, when we get a little bit bigger, 50 times 50, well, that's kind of the same as this, except instead of 5 on the left-hand side, we have 5 times 10, right? And once we have that, you could think of it the way they did, which is that you could group, you could write, you could use the commutative property to group the fives together like this, and then group the times tens together like this. Um, or we could just say, well, this is the same as our previous answer, times 10, right? Because the, only one of the numbers got bigger, and it got bigger by times 10. Anyway, they chose to do it that way, which is to use the commutative property um, and then the associative property. So they commutative property them over so that the fives are together and the tens are together. And then they associate, use the associative property to group those fives together to make 25. 25 times 100 is 2,500. And finally, if we go to this last one, Again, I'm noticing this pattern, right? This is 50 times 50, and this is the same 50 times, not 50, but 50 times 10 over here. So again, it seems like they're just tacking on an extra 10. And I see what they've done here. They said if we, if we knew that the previous one was 5 times 5 times 10 times 10, well, now in this new one, it's 5 times 5, 5 tens, 5 hundreds, times 10 and times 100, and that's 25 times 1,000 or 25,000. Now, the rest of the problems in 3 follow this exact same pattern, which is that 
you're going to do your reasoning here in the very first part of the letter of the three, and then you're going to get, get a number that looks a little bigger, and then looks a little bigger, and then maybe looks a little bigger, not sure. So it's going to tax your ability to understand both the distributive property and the associative property and the commutative property from time to time so that you can go ahead and use these numbers flexibly and use the, number, the math you've done in previous parts of the problem to solve future parts of the problem. All right. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.